As climate change threatens the existence of many major American cities, it is imperative that architectural design tackles sustainability at all scales. In recent decades, sustainable practices have been implemented in large-scale civic and commercial projects. However, they are not commonly found in small-scale residential projects due to the high upfront cost of developing and implementing new technology, as well as difficulty of changing culturally embedded building practices. The present lack of affordable, sustainable options for small-scale construction and single-family homes presents an opportunity for innovation and experimentation. We are Green Core. An architecture design studio investigating new ways to introduce playful, modular, small-scale living in an urban context. By experimenting with the accessory dwelling unit typology, GreenCore addresses issues of density, sustainability, and affordability through an adaptable design. The result of our research is three prototypical mod homes. Accessory dwelling units, commonly referred to as ADUs or granny flats, address the increasing need for housing in rapidly growing cities without contributing to urban sprawl. Each mod home design, developed by the Green Core Studio, integrates water, energy, and waste management systems while showcasing the efficiency of prefabricated construction. Ranging from one to two bedrooms, mod home ADUs house a variety of programs and number of occupants. ADUs maintain the visual character of a neighborhood while supporting the existing communities and their culture. The structural and spatial triangles seen in plan are derived from a shared modular triangular grid. All three designs employ the same construction method and system design guidelines while responding to site-specific requirements. Mod Home's modularity and ability to be prefabricated using CNC technologies allows it to be an affordable option for homeowners to build and profit from, spurring economic growth. I love ADUs. I've done research on them. I've, I've written about them. I've never personally owned one or, or built one. But generally speaking, I think I'm all for ADUs. I think we should have more of them. In Austin, we're building, you know, depending on the year, three to 400 of them per year. And I would love it if that number were 10 times as high as it is now. There's a lot of unused space in most people's front and backyards. So if you were to kind of tighten that up and add two or three houses or fourplexes or something like that, um, it would really allow for costs of properties to go down. So whoever's buying, you don't have to spend as much to, to make up the profit from the investor. There's also a housing crisis in terms of uh, just not enough inventory in the city. So two, three, four little houses per property with small backyards would be a way to kind of keep the fabric of the neighborhood, the character, uh, while also potentially quadrupling the number of people that could live here. Within the southeast region of Austin, Texas, adjacent to the Colorado River, is a 200-year-old neighborhood by the name of Montopolis. Nicknamed Poverty Island in the 1960s, the neighborhood's economic disadvantage and resiliency date back to its founding as a freedman's town for sharecroppers after the Civil War. This house is built on property that went through the abatement process for a crack house. The house next door was built on property that went through the abatement process for a crack house. Um, that house over there was a crack house. There's mm -hmm. at least a dozen of them within a block of here. It was easier to get a crack rock and heroin here at 10 o'clock at night than it was to get a gallon of milk. One of the things that I grew up here in this neighborhood was that this was a real uh, Hispanic neighborhood. We hardly ever saw any white people here. We had, I grew up here with a lot of black people and a lot of uh, Mexican American people here. I think what we've seen here in the last five years is nothing compared to what's gonna happen in the next five years. It's gonna push a lot of these people that are in this neighborhood now, it will eventually push them out because they won't be able to afford to live here. Today, Montopolis sits on the precipice of change. Within a rapidly transforming metropolitan area, it brings forward a conversation regarding affordability, multi-generational housing, and urban density. 
There's no possible policy that can deliver a single family house on a quarter acre of land that's affordable to a middle income household. It's just, it's not possible. The houses in this neighborhood were going for somewhere in the 200 range, like mid 200s, 250-ish was kind of what I would consider the median house cost for, you know, a fixer upper, but something that was livable. And now it seems like it's somewhere between five and 700,000 for the same house. So, you know, like some of these homes that are going up here, they're so expensive, like the house on the corner over there, I don't know if you guys noticed, they just finished it. And the house is basically like 200 square feet bigger than this house. They want 775,000 for that house. That's crazy. If you want people to not be displaced, the only way you can achieve that is by pairing anti-displacement policy with an acceptance of a lot of growth. It just, Austin is an exploding city and you know at some point the bubble is gonna break, but the bubbles always come back. The thing that's remarkable about Austin is the rate of growth doubling every 20 to 25 years, that's something you're more used to seeing in the developing world rather than in the United States. So it just makes it very unusual. But I do think that we could easily become the size of Houston or Dallas, Fort Worth. You know, we're, we're at about 2.4 million. Each of those regions is in the vicinity of six to seven million. If I was to put an ADU here, it would probably be before I retire. And it'll probably be so that my mom lives there so that she can watch the girls. So that would be kind of like phase one. And then once older, I would want this to live there to take care of me. We have a different property on the corner of Hogan and Montopolis. Uh, and we're, we're gonna develop that one because that one has direct access to both streets. So you can have at least two houses in ADU. We would want it to be like made so that we can all interact. It's not like your house, your house, your house. You know, you can always buy more land if you want, but reducing the necessary footprint of a lot and the house on it to optimize the utility, why wouldn't we? Given what we know about housing unaffordability, what we know about climate, given what we know about all these things, we're gonna have to fill in our existing neighborhoods with more housing, there's just no doubt. While not rooted on a particular plot of land, Mod Home ADUs looks to foster meaningful relationships across the Montopolis community. In the spirit of modular, affordable construction, Greencore Studio has developed a prototypical ADU that tackles these issues. Water. Through the use of a cistern, rainwater is collected and stored within or beside the ADU. The slope of the modular roof system is strategically designed to optimize and direct the flow of water into designated collection points. Once collected, the water is filtered and transformed to potable water or non-potable gray water for use within the ADU. Aquaponics. With the aim of supporting a more self-sufficient way of living, homeowners may choose to implement a media bed aquaponics system in their ADU. Aquaponics is a spatially efficient and water conserving method of growing food at home year round. It harnesses the symbiotic relationship between plants and fish in which the fish's waste provides nutrients for the plants. The media bed technique is inexpensive, simple to put together, and because the media supports plants like soil wood, it can support plants with roots of all sizes. Solar power. Photovoltaic panels are attached to the modular roof system at the optimal angle of 30 degrees facing south. These panels allow for solar energy to be harvested from the sun and converted to electrical currents. Heating and cooling. Through the use of an air-to-air -air heating and cooling system, the internal temperature of the ADU is easily regulated in a sustainable manner. A reversing valve allows the pump to both heat and cool the ADU regardless of outside temperatures. Passive cooling techniques, such as natural and cross-ventilation, are also implemented. Waste. 
A compacting trash can allows waste to be collected less frequently. A gravity-fed RV toilet reduces water usage through a self-filling pedal, and the kitchen is configured to place all food within the optimal line of sight for increased awareness of available produce. As a kit of parts, Mod Homes ADUs can be built without loud noise or heavy machinery, and they're designed to work with existing neighborhoods and infrastructure. Urban sprawl caused by passive development creates detrimental outcomes for our cities and our planet. As Austin and many cities around the country grow at unprecedented rates, we must adapt a mindset of intentional sustainable development. With a group of 13 architecture students, we set out to find inventive ways of addressing the dynamic challenges of the built environment. By applying pre-existing systems and technology, we were able to bridge the gap between small-scale design and sustainability. Through prefabricated construction as a kit of parts, homeowners can build their own mod homes ADU. Cistern technology allows occupants to be more water conscious while solar technology makes ADU self-supporting. Furthermore, waste prevention methods and an air-to-air -air heating and cooling system make the ADU efficient while still comfortable. Mod homes is a scheme with a light touch and a large impact. Together, we at GreenCore are determined to address densification on a community and global scale. We design with the intention to make our planet and our way of life more sustainable.